Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. So I'll begin, as always, by reading the blurb. Nora hasn't seen Claire for ten years. Not since the day Nora walked out of her old life and never looked back. Until, out of the blue, an invitation to Claire's hen party arrives. A weekend in a remote cottage. The perfect opportunity for Nora to reconnect with her best friend, to put the past behind her. But something goes wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. And as secrets and lies unravel, out in the dark, dark wood, the past will finally catch up with Nora. Okay, so this is a thriller novel. It's Ruth Ware's first published novel. I actually picked this up as a buddy read with Brian from Brian's Bookshelves as well. He was reading it for Thrillerathon, I think. And I said I would join him with this as it was on my uh, TBR shelves. In the past, I have read The Woman in Cabin 10, and I've done a review for that, which I'll link to below. Basically, my thoughts on that and on this are kind of similar but kind of different in a way. So, this is backwards to The Woman in Cabin 10 in that I thought that had a really good 200 pages to begin with and then the last 100 pages let it down. Whereas this, I thought it had a really sort of slow build-up but then the ending in the last 100 pages in particular just kind of hit you in the face and they were really well done actually it, it brought the last hundred pages really brought the book up in my overall esteem i think so i think it took me a while to really get that interested for a start like the first 50 pages of it is literally just a hen party and luckily it's like a hen party goes wrong so then something happens you know and uh I, I kind of, I did figure out what one of the t big twists was going to be, but I don't want to reveal it. But basically, they get a visitor at some point. If you've read it, you know what I mean. They get a visitor, and I, I knew who the visitor was. But so did Brian, and he enjoyed it slightly more than I did, but I still thought it was pretty good. It's probably on a par with The Woman in Cabin 10, which I thought had problems. But at the same time, it was still overall pretty good. I read both of the books in like two days. So... It's pre they're pretty easy to get into, you know, and you can whiz through them. One thing I would say is that I think for Brian in particular, he really liked the way that it kind of jumps between the past and the future. or Well, the past and the present, I guess. Which I didn't really like too much, but I can understand why it was done and it did work in the context of the story. It just wasn't my personal favourite, you know, literary device, I guess. But, um... Brian thought it worked really well, so there's that. Here's, here's a bit of a paragraph that I related to from the main character. Uh, she, so she says, Maybe it's something about working from home. Outside of a 9 to 5 job, it's very easy for the days to get shapeless, meld together. You can find you're still in your dressing gown at 5pm and the only person you've seen all day is the milkman. There are days when I don't hear a single human voice apart from the radio. And you know what? I quite like that. It's a good existence for a writer, in many ways. Alone with the voices in your head, the characters you've created. In the silence, they become very real. But it's not necessarily the healthiest way to live. So having a routine is important. It gives you something to hang on to. Something to differentiate the weekdays from the weekends. And I'm actually working on getting a, a you know, a, a routine myself as well. It uses, uh, like, the layout of the book, mimics emails, which is a bit of a pet hate of mine. I don't know why, I, I just don't really like it. But, uh, again, there's nothing wrong with it, it works fine, it's just a pet hate. I liked that it mentions that one of the characters sent included a red, a read receipt, a red receipt, sorry. Uh, I've only ever seen that written down before, so that just confused me. So that when, you know, when you, um, you mark, attach a red receipt and then when somebody reads that email it, it sends like an acknowledgement to the sender and it's very impolite one of the characters mentions using zipcar which i thought was funny because they were a former client of mine at my old company there's a bit where they're talking about ages and uh so so let, let let's let me uh, let me just read this okay this will give you a good idea of the writing style as well i'll begin melanie said she pushed her hair back off her face and fiddled with something at her neckline i saw that it was a tiny silver cross on a chain the kind you get as a crisp the kind you get as a christening present. I'm Melanie Cho. Well, Melanie Blaine Cho now, I guess. But it's a bit of a mouthful and I've kept my own name for work. I shared a house at university with Flo and Claire, but I took two years out before uni, so I'm a bit older than the rest of you guys. At least I don't know about you, Tom. I'm 28. 27, Tom said. So I'm the group granny. I've just had a baby, well, six months ago, and I'm breastfeeding, so please excuse me if you see me running out of the room with giant wet patches on my boobs. I can't relate to the breastfeeding, but, um, I'm 29, so I'd be group granddad. I would be the oldest. I guess minor spoiler, she finds out who is, uh, 
getting married and uh, she thought it was someone called William Pilgrim and then she realises it says here then she realised and her face changed and at the same second I knew where I'd heard that name before and realised how stupid I'd been Billy Pilgrim, Slaughterhouse Five, James's favourite book. Okay, I said James's, that was a spoiler. Never mind though. We get a mention where the pizza arrives and they're like, make sure you leave the vegetarian slices for Tom, because Tom's a vegetarian. And I can confirm that this does happen. Every time I'm in a social setting and somebody orders pizza, nobody says they want vegetarian pizza, so they, we just get one. And then they take all the slices and I'm like, that, that's the only pizza I can eat. Now you're eating all of the pizza. And you got your bloody meat grease on my pizza. But I'm vegan now. You know this. I've mentioned this. I like this little exchange here. This little bit of dialogue. So uh, they're talking about... They're playing Never Have I Ever, I think. And they're talking about tattoos. Claire grinned and heaved herself up off the sofa. She turned her back to us and pulled up her silver top. It shimmered like a fish skin. Twining up from the back of her jeans were two black Celtic designs. Uh... Uh, not the football team. Twining up from the twining up from the back of her jeans were two black Celtic designs curving out towards her sim slim waist. Arse antlers, Nina gave a snort. Youthful folly, Claire said, a touch ruefully. Drunken trip to Brighton when I was 22. They're going to look delightful when you're an old lady, Nina said. At least they'll provide a homing path for the young man slated to wipe your arse in the nursing home. It'll give him something to look at, poor sod. Fair enough, that was an enjoyable exchange. That was some good banter. We, ha we have a reference to uh, someone goes, It's like Agatha effing Christie and the Ten Little Eskimos. Indians. What? Ten Little Indians in the book. It was Eskimos. It bloody wasn't. I sat down on the bed. It was the N-word, actually, if you're going for the original. Then Indians. Then soldiers when they decided that e offing ethnic minorities was maybe a bit strange. It was never Eskimos. I bet Brian liked that as well when he was reading it. We also have a... Because one of the characters is an actor or a playwright or something like that. I can't remember now. And um, we get a reference to The History Boys by Alan Bennett, which I read recently and enjoyed. I'm not going to go any further, though, because that takes us up to about halfway through the book. Basically, they're all in this house in the woods. And there's somebody there. And then something bad happens. And then... Like, there's a bit of amnesia going on as the main character tries to remember what happened. And then it's all resolved by the end, which is all you want for a book like this. Overall, I'm going to up my rating for this a little bit. At the time I rated it for my uh, book blog, I gave it 3.5. But looking back on it, I'm going to give it a 3.75 out of 5. It, it's kind of stuck with me a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if it sounds like your kind of thing, you'll probably enjoy it. So there we have it. That's what I thought of In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.